Using pan pastels with your colored pencils speeds up the process so much. Like this piece took me about an hour and a half. Whereas if I did this entire piece in colored pencil, it would have taken so much longer. I've been using pan pastels with pastel pencils for quite some time, but it's only recently that I've been starting to use them with colored pencils. So these tips will help you get started with pan pastels for your colored pencil drawings. I'll just give you a quick rundown of what pan pastels are and how they work. So they're basically a soft pastel that has been compressed into these pans. You can use soft tools to apply them and that's spelt S-O-F-F-T. That's just the brand name of the different sponges. They come in a variety of different sizes. So you have some really small ones that look a little bit like eyeshadow sponges, but there's also some bigger sponges for larger areas. The paper that you work on makes a huge difference in how the pan pastels work. So depending on how many layers you want to add, how much detail and that kind of thing, you could try the pan pastels on your favorite colored pencil paper, but papers like Clairefontaine Pastel Mat or Lux Archival Sanded Papers allows a lot more layers than other smoother kind of papers that are generally used with colored pencil. So with the techniques that I like to use, I like to add multiple layers and build up my values and my textures as I go along. So I prefer to use the Lux Archival Sanded Paper because I think it's just perfect for the techniques that I'm using. But other people like to use other kinds of papers, so just do some trials on your favorite papers and see how you go. But I do definitely recommend trying the Lux Archival because it made a huge difference for me. Using pan pastels with your colored pencils speeds up the process so much. Like this piece took me about an hour and a half. Whereas if I did this entire piece in colored pencil, it would have taken so much longer, especially getting that smooth background. Even if I used something like solvent to blend, I'd still have to add numerous layers to get that level of saturation that I would need, which takes quite a lot of time. One of the main complaints that I get from people about the soft tools in particular is that they wear away quite quickly. And a lot of people are suggesting to use makeup sponges instead of these tools, but to be honest, they don't pick up the pastel and apply it in the same way as the soft tools do. So I don't recommend doing that. I actually recommend trying to make your sponges last longer. To do that, you basically just don't press too hard with them. When you first apply the pastel to your paper, a lot of the pastel comes off of the tool. And then as you do a few more strokes, less and less pastel comes off. And a lot of people try and press harder to try and get some of that pastel to come off of the tool. But that is the exact reason why the tools are wearing away quickly. Because if you're working on these kinds of sanded paper or pastel mat, you'll damage and wear through your tools very quickly. So instead of pressing harder to get more pastel to come off, go get more pastel from your pan when it runs out. Pan pastels are actually a really cost effective option in the long run. They do seem to be a bit expensive when you first buy them, but the pastel that's in that pan lasts for such a long time and it lasts for much longer than any colored pencil or pastel pencil or even soft pastel stick as well. There are two sets of pan pastels that I recommend buying depending on your budget. So I have a set of 20 pans, which is called the General Realism with Kirsty Rebecca set. And obviously I'm biased, but I created this set to include all of the colors that you need for any subject that you want to work on. I literally use this set for portraits, landscapes, still life, wildlife, pet portraits, florals and any other subject that I can think of and I've never needed to use any other color. But if you don't have the budget for a larger set, you could also just start out with five colors and build up your set over time. The set of five painting colors includes the three primary colors which are red, blue and yellow as well as a black and a white. So you can literally mix any color you need just like paint. And I will leave a link to both of those sets in the description below so you can check them out if you want to. 
but blending pan pastas is quite easy once you get the hang of it. I usually just pick up a little bit of pastel from each color that I need from the pans and then go straight onto the paper to mix the colors. For example, if I needed an orange, I could grab a little bit of red on my sponge and a little bit of yellow. And then when I apply that to the paper, it will mix together to create orange. And then you can adjust it from there so you can add a little bit more yellow to your paper or more red or whatever color you need to alter it. You can also get a piece of printer paper and leave that to the side of your drawing and you can mix your colors on that. So you can see exactly what color you're going to get before you add it to your paper. And because the printer paper is smooth, it works really well as a palette because it's easy to lift off that color to apply to your drawing paper. It does take a long time to do it that way, but if you're on a budget and only have five colors, then it's a really great option to start with. The other benefit to pan pastels is that they apply really smoothly and blend really easily. And we all know how hard it is to get a smooth background or a bokeh or blurry effect in the background when you're using colored pencil. You can usually see the pencil strokes and it just never looks as smooth as you would have hoped. So pan pastels are the perfect solution for that. All you need to do is apply a couple of light layers of pan pastel and it looks super smooth and creamy and the finish of the pan pastel is matte just like your colored pencils so it blends in very very nicely. Pan pastel makes it really really easy to control how much pastel you're laying down onto your surface. If you've ever used soft pastel sticks, you'll know that you can't really add a small amount of pastel very evenly. It's really quite difficult. But pan pastel allows you to work up your layers to build up the pastel. The unique soft tools allow you to apply really thin layers, or if you want more pastel, you can just apply more layers on top. And the reason that this is important is because if you want to use it for the base layer of your main subject with colored pencil over the top, then you want to make sure that you aren't adding too much pastel underneath. Otherwise your colored pencil is not going to be able to layer on top very easily. So when I do my base layers, you'll see quite a lot of paper showing through and it does look quite blotchy and just not very nice, but I actually want it to look like that because it means that I still have enough texture in my paper to come over the top with my colored pencil details. Whereas I can continue to add more pastel to my background until I get the smoothness that I'm after. If you have more questions about using pan pastels with colored pencil, I've created this video in the corner where I'm answering the most common questions that colored pencil artists have about pan pastels. So click on that and I'll see you over there.